Hello, today I'm going to show you how I recycled my old Blu-ray recorder to make a machine that burns onto wood. Our essential component is a Blu-ray recorder. It has to be Blu-ray and not digital versatile disc as Blu-ray ones have a laser that produces a wavelength of 445 nanometers. 45 nanometers above ultraviolet light. Now, why does this matter? This matters because it's a much more powerful laser than the laser that DVDs have, which is a red laser. This is a blue laser, as we already said, because of the type of wave it has. That Make sure the Blu-ray recorder is 10 times or more on its recording part. Otherwise, it may not work for you. This one is 16 times as it goes overboard. A 12-1 also works perfectly. Anyway, we are going to disassemble it and we are going to take out in the middle what it has there. Let's say all the readers have the same thing, which is the mechanism that moves the laser and the laser itself that is located inside that metal casing in the center of this mechanism. And we are going to make use of both things, the laser and the mechanism that moves it. The laser is there in the middle, as you can see, and it's not that. But that's the laser's magnifying glass. The laser is reflected by some types of mirrors, and there are two. One is the laser we are going to use, and the other is a laser that is not going to work for us. In other words, one laser is for reading, and the other is for recording. We are going to use this one, which is the recording one. How do you know which is which? Well, this is really more than anything luck, let's say. We'll do it with one option. If it doesn't work, it's because it's the other one. It's a process of elimination. Next, we'll purchase a common ordinary laser module like this one. And it's all made of metal. I mean, the whole laser is metallic. And this works to dissipate the heat. Since we're going to use our laser with quite a bit of current for the module that it is, it's going to heat up quite a bit, so we need it to be tightly fitted in a module so that this can be dissipated. We're going to remove the laser diode that it comes with. So simply with a pair of pliers, we pull it up and it comes out. And in that same place where this diode was, we're going to put the new diode, the diode, let's say, um, we took from the Blu-ray. All diodes are the same. I mean, this type of diodes. Because then there are others called open can that you may not find. But we're going to work with these that are like this. And you'll see that they're all the same. In this case, I turned it on since I had my uh, regulated power supply. And I know quite a bit about laser diodes. But in your case, don't connect it to anything yet. As they are very sensitive components. And, and if it's not well regulated, they burn. So be careful. You're not going to damage the whole Blu-ray reader just to try out the laser pointer. Now we need another reader, a 400 digital versatile disc or any type. I paid 120 pesos or about a dollar in Argentina for this older item. And we're going to do this just to remove the other movement system, let's say. Actually, it's called a stepper motor. And by the way, if this second reader is a digital versatile disc burner of and it's quite a few X. Keep the laser too. That is, take out the laser in the same way you took out the Blu-ray one. And keep it because you can make a laser like this one that burns. And it's very good. It's also a good project. And if you want, comment like this. And I'll realize. Now, I cut a couple of pieces of wood. You can actually do this with wood, aluminum, whatever you want. I did it with wood because I had a couple of pieces I could use. Like a shelf and some things I had left over. So... I use them for this. The thing is to make like a kind of 50 screwed to a piece of wood. I don't know how to describe it well with words, but I think the video speaks for itself. It's just about making a structure to put one of the mechanisms on top, which is the one that's going to move sideways. And below is the other mechanism that's going to move forward and backwards. This will make our laser move in both horizontal positions and vertical. Let's say in reality it's x-axis and y-axis and it's going to allow us to print whatever we want with the laser itself in question. As long as the mechanism moves freely 
You can screw it, glue it, or however you want. I screwed it, and as you can see, not in a very neat way, because I didn't have the right things, but oh well. Anyway, it works. Uh, the only thing you have to make sure is that it is straight. Let's say you didn't put it crooked or anything like that, and then anyway is valid to screw it. That, that really doesn't matter. Below, to give it a separation and so that the mechanism can move freely, I put some nuts that I had left over from another project, which were no longer useful. And I screwed them more or less below where the other mechanism was. To give you an idea, the top mechanism has to be aligned halfway with the middle of the bottom mechanism. The video demonstrates how it functions, in case my explanation was unclear. Now, the little motors that they have on the side, which is the little motor that makes the mechanism move, they have four, let's say, points, which are the four wires that we are going to have to solder. This is very easy because it already comes with a stranger. And what do I know? We just put a wire and it solders easily. We are going to use this component, which is a computer numerical control shield for Arduino Uno, which is the most basic of all and the most common. And we are going to bridge these pins that are shown here uh, in the video. You can use the bridge connectors, but I didn't have, so I just bent it and put a little bit of tin. It's just bridging with the one below the six with connectors. And above, we are going to put the controllers themselves of our motor. Each one controls a different motor, which would be a different mechanism. And usually this pack is sold to you all complete. Anyway, I'm going to leave the link in the description. It's impossible to get confused when you connect it to the Arduino, since it's a shield. That's what they're called. And yeah, it fits perfectly with all the Arduino pins, or it can't be put wrong. On the side, you will see the four pins to connect it to the four motor pins. This actually has an order, but of, I don't really know how to explain it in an easy way. So just try all the combinations and you will see when it moves, it's fine. I mean, now when we talk about the software, I will explain how to realize it better. And for the laser, I simply grabbed this little heat sink that I had. I made a hole in it and inside I put the laser that we had made. This was not really necessary, but well, as it heated up a little. I wanted it to be more cooled, so I put it there. Then, once you have made the hole, if you do this, you stick it with a thermal paste for a better heat transfer. And with epoxy putty, I stuck a little piece of iron underneath so that everything is leveled. Since that system is, well, they are some plastics that are totally uneven. So that the piece we are going to put is leveled with the top, I stuck a little plate. And on top, I stuck the laser we had made. As you can see, there are three components on top. The middle one, a relay, activates and deactivates the laser. On the sides are two current and voltage regulators, which we will discuss now. Um, it's important for this that you have a multimeter or a tester that can measure voltage and current. And now we're going to see that our regulators have three little knobs, let's say. The first one for voltage, we're not going to use the second one and the third one for current. We're going to adjust the first one for voltage to 4.5 volts and the one for current to 30 milliampers. And we're going to connect this to a little switch button. And the second one, we're going to adjust to 5 volts and with a current of 150 to 200 milliampers. This is going to be what regulates the current and the total voltage that we're going to give to our diode and thus prevent it from burning or overheating. This laser can be powered up to 500 or 600 milliampers I've seen, but the laser runs a lot of risk of burning and such. And also that laser at that current becomes very dangerous. And I also want to talk to you about that. It is considered that a laser of more than 5,000 watts causes lifelong problems in the eyes. If it hits you and this laser is going to work with more or less one watt or more, that is more than 200 times the limit of the 5,000 watts. So always use protective glasses. I'm going to leave it in the description. And if you're going to work with this type of laser or with another type of laser, always use them. Because this laser, for example, if it hits your eyes, it will leave you blind for life. And this is no joke in the end. Once we have them regulated, our regulators, pardon the redundancy, 
we connect it to the laser. We connect to the laser following this polarity. Don't mix up the pins or connect the positive where the negative goes or you'll burn it. And this is how it will look. This is the complete connection diagram. So you have it much clearer and don't get confused at all. Once this is done, we turn on the switch after connecting everything to the current, obviously. And we see that our laser turned on with a low intensity since it is only using 30 milliampers. And now we can take the opportunity to adjust the lens until we get the smallest dot we can. This as it has very little power, it will not burn your wood. Don't worry. Once this is done, we turn off the switch that we used before to calibrate it. And we are going to move on to configure the program. It should also be said that in the tests I did, it did not raise more than 20 degrees or 19 degrees, which is the ambient temperature. So it works perfectly. Once the program is installed here, we give it to put it in English. And then the only configuration we are going to do is make sure here it says 320 in both. Here, we are going to see that it does not have many things. And the only one that is going to serve us is the one that says speed. The more you put to that value, let's say the grayer the impression will be, or the less you put, the more burned it will be. So it will be blacker. Here we give it to continuous, then here. In this little folder, we open the photo that we are going to want to record, and we resize it to a maximum of where it says above 45, which is the maximum that our motors give us. This can then be enlarged, but it is already changing the motors here. We give it to communication one or whatever. You disappear once the Arduino is connected to the computer. We give it to play, and it will only start to... Th it works very well. Do everything yourself. It can be made to work even better by changing the relay for a solid state relay. I intended to do it that way, but the one I bought was faulty. So I had to use that one. And the bad thing is that it doesn't work for empanadas a shame, but it works for any type of wood. I tried with pine and I tried with hard wood like the Argentine red quebrajo, the hack life. And it goes perfect. In fact, I, the hack life used it to record the, the hack life go of the channel. Um, in a clock that I made, which I leave here in the description in case you want to make it, I have a video uploaded and that I sent it to the YouTuber Visasat in Spain anyway. That was all. If you do it, tag me on Instagram that I share it. If you liked it, leave a comment and uh, like, you know, that if you want, you can subscribe to the channel so we grow more and more. Thanks for watching the video. See you next time. Bye.